Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Getting That Medical Degree. Welcome back to our channel. Uh, we're going to be talking about anemia today, my favorite topic. I like anemia. It's, a, it's an interesting topic. Pretty easy points. Pretty easy chapter. So, this is for the NAPEX, everybody. This is the base competency for a pharmacy. Well, for a pharmacy grad to get their license to become a pharmacist. Base competency meaning you need to know the big ideas and how to treat the stuff. And maybe you know one or two of the tricks they might pull out after you at you. But this is a small chapter, so probably gonna be like one or two questions from it. But that said, there's different types of anemia. There's the microcytic, which is iron deficiency. Uh, in the lab, it's going to show a low MC. Macrocytic is a B12 slash folate deficiency. This is going to be a high MC. So you need to know that. So on your tests, they're going to show you a patient profile. They're going to show you labs. And you okay, see the MCV is low. So you need to make sure you're treating with treat their iron deficiency anemia. Or if they have a high MCV, make sure you're treating it with the folate and B12. Now if they have a normal NC, MCV and they're still having anemia, anemia is caused by a bleed, chronic kidney disease, or bone marrow, bone marrow failure, which gives you indication that, hey, you need to look somewhere else for this anemia, somewhere it could be more serious. So, the iron deficient anemia or the microcytic anemia, how do, what do you do with this? So this is a low MCV, low hemoglobin, which is HG. Iron's probably low, ferritin's probably low, but you do have a high TIBC. That's one value that might be high. I uh, recommend about 100 to 200 milligrams of elemental iron. Taking on an empty stomach, you want to avoid a PPI, so that's like a protonics or a pantoprazole, or an H2RA, which is like famotidine, or like acid blockers. Uh, gluconate is a type of iron, so like iron gluconate or something like that. That's 12% elemental iron, sulfate is 20%, dried sulfate and fumarate is 30%, and carbonyl iron is 100% elemental iron. You just need to know that, just because they might just ask you a question, how much iron should you give this patient? Pretty easy question, you just need to know the uh, percentages of it. Black box warning, fatal poisoning and accidental overdose. Yeah, pretty important thing. Tell them not to don't overdo your iron. ADE is constipation and dark stool. Oh. Looking at twelve percent sulfate, twenty percent fumarate, thirty percent. Know those numbers, and you'll should be good. So ferrous sulfates. This is usually the treatment for iron deficient anemia. Usually three hundred twenty-five milligrams TID, which means three times a day. Don't worry about the dried, and that probably won't be asked. Drug interactions with phosphates, vitamin C, increase the absorption. Chloroquinolones, levofloxacin, H2RAs, and PPIs decrease the absorption of the iron. Watch out for these medications if you're on it. They you might be getting a lot of iron, but you might not be getting that, all the iron in the body because these medications might be the need. IV iron is only used for CKD, which is chronic kidney disease, while you're on hemodialysis or HD, or you're getting a, your other P. Your therapy stimulating agent. Or you just can't tolerate oral for whatever reason. Iron sucrose is one of the options, which is Benefer. Or your amoxitol or ferrahem. Ferrahem is pretty common I see in the hospital. Iron dextran. You need to do a test dose with iron dextran, which means you need to test it before you give like a big dose. This is because they can get anaphylaxis with uh, dextran. So you know, watch out for that because anaphylaxis is never a good thing. Uh, macrocytic anemia. So B12. So nasal cabal is a one week, a one nostril weekly dose, or you can give a IM or a deep sub Q injection. And the dose, depending on how severe their anemia is, and full of gas is 0.4 to 1 milligram. It's more patient specific. That one. Then you have normal acidic, so you can use some uh, ESA agents, which stimulates where blood cells to be made. 
Black box warning risk of death, which is never good. In my eye, so it's a bad stroke, VTE, thrombosis. So, epitin alpha, which is epigen or procrit. This is used three times a week when hemoglobin is less than 10. Less than 10. Darboputin or Aricep, three times longer half life. Usually given once weekly. Again, monitor their hemoglobin, hematocrit, serum fratin, keratin, and blood pressure. Refrigerate it and do not shake it. We also have one last anemia that's called hemolytic anemia. Uh, G6P deficiency. Do we do a direct Coulomb test for this to detect the antibodies? Some medications are more prone to deficiency cause hemolytic anemia. One off the top of my head is Dapsone. Something to keep. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys learned something. Put the video on two times speed to get through this within three minutes. You guys can listen to it twice because it's a pretty easy chapter. You need to know the main treatments. You need to know the percentages of elemental iron in the iron iron things they can give you. Any closing thoughts? No. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and also leave a question down in the comments if you have any questions about this chapter. I personally found it pretty straightforward, but you guys might be confused on something, so let us know in the comments below and we can clarify on any topics. Peace.